I'm going to start it off the same way with some identification of what our variables are. So let x be what? Number of hours. Number of hours. All right. So we have two possible parts, right? They didn't give them names, right? One park and the other park. All right, so let's call it park one, park two. They should be equal when we get our costs accounted for. All right, so the first park, what's my expression for that? Eight plus two X. And the second park? Two plus five X. All right, so we want to solve. What do I do? Subtract two X from five X at the same time I could do what? Subtract two from the eight. So we're looking at six equals three X. Now I do what? Divide by the three. And we got x equals 2. There you go. So we need a statement of what that 2 really means. I don't want to just be like, x is 2. Figure it out on your, you know, like, it's got to be some sort of indication. Right? So a brief statement. What would that statement be? After two hours, the cost is the same. Very good. Okay, good catch. All right, so let's figure that out. What would the uh, cost be? $12. All right, how did we get that? You can plug it in. You can plug it in, yeah, plug it into either side, right? Doesn't make a difference. So, typically, you can just do it in parentheses if you want. $12. Just be careful about instructions mm -hmm. on a test, quiz, regents exam. You know, if it says only a complete algebraic solution will be accepted, then uh, as lame as it seems, you would have to show how you got that 12. All right. So just be prepared for that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, consecutive integer problem. Directions. State a let statement. Write an equation to solve each problem algebraically. Uh, it kind of requires that you know what the word consecutive means. And uh, what does the word consecutive mean? One after the other. All right, one after another. All right, so sometimes they'll say, and you've probably seen stuff like this before, they'll say consecutive integers, they'll say consecutive even integers, they'll, con they'll say consecutive odd integers, they'll say consecutive triples. Yeah, so you'd have to think about what that means in, in those situations. So let's take a look at number one. Keep it as simple as we can, at least in the early going. Find three consecutive integers whose sum is eight. So I need a let statement. I'm gonna let x equal my first integer. I need three consecutive integers. So I'm gonna need a second integer and a third integer. But I need the expressions that go along with those. So what expression would represent my second integer? X plus one. X plus one. 
And my third integer? X plus two. X plus two. All right, if you're thinking consecutive, you're just counting, right? So one, two, three, four, five. One and two are consecutive. Two and three are consecutive. Seven and eight are consecutive. Always separated by one unit. All right, so that's where that plus one is coming from. Now, we're looking for a sum of those consecutive integers equal to 300. So x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 equals 300. So we just have to combine some terms, clean it up a little bit, and we'll, we'll have our solution. All right. Um, you know what, let me just do something real quick. Um, what is this? Can I do this? Oh, what is that feature? Oh, a little, little copy-paste action. All right, well, I don't want to do that, but it's nice to know I can. <coughs> I, what I wanted to do is just move all this stuff over a smidge. So. Let's do it this way. Yeah. I just wanted a little space after the, the words integer. All right, so combine our like terms. Left-hand side is going to simplify down to what? 3x plus 3. 3x plus 3 equals 300. Then what? Subtract 3. Now we have 3x equals 297. Then what? Divide by, three. Divide by 3. And we get x equal to what? 90, 99. All right. So we don't need a, a conclusion statement for consecutive integer problems usually. You just need to say what the answers are find three consecutive integers all right so that's why I left that little space there because now I know that the first one is 99 add one to that you get a hundred add one more you get 101 and so now this becomes my final answer but you want to draw my attention to that on a test, right? So don't just tuck those numbers in there. I, I might not see it. If I don't see it, then I'll take off credit. I, I, I might give you the credit back later, but if it's not obvious, it doesn't pop off the paper at me, then you run the risk of losing the credit and not even knowing why, right? So box it in. Make it clear that this is where you want me to look for your final answer and that this is the supporting work, all right? So that's the first one I wanted to go over. I want to do number six now. All right, so we'll take a look at number two to start. Well, number one appears to be complete. The upper class did Yeah, utilizing uh, solid paying attention skills. Most of the class in the answer. Uh, find three consecutive integers, uh, all kidding aside. Number two is just going to reinforce what happened in number one, so it's, I'm taking this from scratch anyway, so don't worry about it. Find three consecutive integers so, uh, so that the sum of the first and the third integers is 38. All right, when it comes to consecutive integer problems, you have really a few different components. You have the part that deals with the setup and then another part that deals with the equation based on your setup. And then within that, there's a, few, a couple of things going on. But what I want to do first and foremost with any of these questions is just focus on this. Get this out of here. All right, so I need three consecutive integers. I'm going to let x equal my first integer.
Consecutive means what? One after the other. Yeah, one after the other is the better one. So if I have a two and I want the next consecutive integer, what would that next one be? Three. Three. All right. What's the difference between consecutive integers? One unit, right? All right, so the math difference, not like, like common speaking difference. Right, so if I want three consecutive integers, I need three components to my let statement. So I need a second integer, and I need a third integer. And again, because they are only separated by one unit, we can figure out what the expression would be that corresponds to the second integer. Just increase by one, right? Could I have used minus? Yeah. Maybe, yes. Sure. Yeah, that would make consecutive values, right? My third integer, I'm just increasing by another one, so that's an x plus two. No. If you're consistent with it, you're fine. If you did x, x minus 1, and x minus 2, it would just make the x minus 2 one the smallest one out of the set. But you would still have the same three numbers. All right. So we found expressions that represent three consecutive integers. So we're good in that regard. Now we get to the, the meat of the problem. The sum of the first and the third integers. Is, is just equals, right? So if I take the first integer, which is x, a sum just means addition, add it to the third integer, which is what? x plus 2 is the third one. The result should be equal to 38. Combine like terms? Yeah. <laughs> Subtract two both sides. <laughs> and then divide two. So we have 18 as a result. X is 18. X doesn't always mark the spot. X doesn't, I mean, it could mark a spot, just not the only spot. I needed to state all three integers that would satisfy this equation. Or all three integers anyway, right? even though the second one wasn't overly relevant. All right, so I know my first integer is 18. My second one would then be? And then 20. All right, so this ends up being my final answer. A nice detailed let statement can also double as your solution statement. All right, because if you have this organized nicely, then it really is just a matter of putting what the, the final answer would be over here. All right, so that's kind of nice. And then you could do a kind of a mental check the sum of the first and third integers is 38. True? Yeah. Yeah. 18 plus 20 is 38. All right, so we're in good shape there. Yeah, so... The final answer has to have three consecutive integers, but the, the equation statement is only requiring you to use two of them, so it's a little tricky that right there. I honestly, uh, number three is probably an easier version of number two, so I don't think we should do that one together. I think you should do that on your own. We'll do number four. Find three consecutive even integers whose sum is negative 60. Smaller integer to 
should you still write with the bigger, like, with the bigger one is two? Yeah, um, I would say no. Unless you clearly state that the smaller is this, the bigger is that, so that when I'm grading it, I don't think that you think both of them are the correct answer, All right? And also number three is kind of like, it's frustrating, I think, as a student, because you don't need to do algebra to get it. Give me two numbers that are next to each other to add to 13. Six and seven. Six and seven, right? So the, the, to actually have to do the algebra is actually is somewhat annoying, I think. But it's good practice at, at a moment. All right, three consecutive even integers. So let's get our let statement going here. Let x equal the first integer. We need a second, and we need a third. Perfecto. It doesn't matter. As long as your final answer has a list of only even integers, you'll, you'll be fine. If you put even in there, that's, that's even better, but not necessary. All right, so whenever you're dealing with any kind of question involving consecutive, even, odd, integers, whatever, you really want to think about the spacing between any pair of consecutive values. So you think about even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, whatever. 2 and 4 are separated by 2 units, 4 and 6 are separated by 2 units, and so on. So that's how you know, all right? So that's the first part. We have to always address that before we get going on anything else. So that's this. The second part of the problem is telling us the characteristics related to this, whose sum is, is means equal, negative 60. So, interpretation, if we add up all these integers, we should get a result of negative 60. Combine our like terms, what do we get? 3x plus 6 equals negative 60. Then what? Subtract six from each side. Three x equals negative sixty-six. Then what? Divide three on both sides. Divide by three on both sides. I'm a big fan of this kind of problem. You got x equals negative twenty-two. It requires you to have a sense of what an integer is, and then on top of that, what, it, what an even integer will be. So forget about the negative sign. 22 is even, right? Is negative 22 an integer? Yeah, it's an even integer, right? Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Right? So we have what we need. So then my x value is negative 22. I'll make a note of that. Now I'm adding two, and that'll get me where? Negative 20. Negative 20, so we're, getting, we're going in the direction of zero. And then? Negative 18. Negative 18. Oh. All right, so they just asked us to list out the three consecutive integers. Now, double check, these should add up to negative 60 if you add Negative 22, negative 20, that gets you negative 42, plus another negative 18, that gets you to negative 60. The one thing you gotta be careful about with a question like this is the little twists on how the phrasing could be. It could be something like, you know, which of the following is the largest of three consecutive even integers whose sum is equal to negative 60? Or which is the smallest? 
You know, in which case you look at these, you, you have to recognize the size relationship. By the way, which one is the smallest out of these? Uh, negative 22. Largest would then be the negative 18. All right, so you got to be careful about that. All right. <laughs> Three times the smallest of three consecutive even integers is six more than twice the largest. Find the integers. Uh, okay, that's a lot. How about three consecutive even integers? Why don't we start there? I'm going to let x equal the first even integer. That. I need three consecutive even integers, so I need a second even, and I need a third even integer. All right, so three consecutive even integers, so only even numbers. So if the first one I'm calling x, let's say x is two, what would be the next consecutive even integer? Four. How do I get there? Add two, Add two yeah. After the four, we would have six. We get there by doing what? Add the original number by four, or add the second number by two. So either way, you're gonna get x plus four. So now we have at least our variables accounted for. All right, so what I like to do when I'm doing a word problem is identify where the equal sign ought to be is means equals so I know that everything that came before that should be one expression everything that comes after it should be another a, a brand new expression so just read it as you see it three times the smallest of three consecutive even integers all right so three times what x. three times x x is the smallest is actually let me do that in red <coughs> is means equals. Now we have all this other stuff afterwards. Six more than twice the largest. So what does that look like? Six more than twice the largest. I think I heard Maybe somebody said it right, but I'm not as confident. Two parentheses, x plus four, plus six. All right, twice the largest. The largest is x plus four. All right, so two times that quantity. Six more than that, so add six. If you want to put the six in front, you could do that. You could do 6 plus 2 times x plus 4, which I think is something I heard someone say. Uh, but I'm, I wasn't really confident. Uh, addition is commutative, so you can go in either order. So that's perfectly fine. But now that we have an expression, let's go ahead and solve it. What's my first move? I said expression. I meant to say equation. So 2x plus 8 plus the 6 simplifies to 2x <sighs> subtract the 2x and we get what x equals 14 all right, so again, X doesn't always mark the spot, or I should say X doesn't always mark the only spot. We need the integers, plural, so I need all of them. So we know the first one is 14. What's my second one? Followed by excellente. Good looking solution right there.
right? But you can see how the line is starting to get a little funkier as we go down the line. So let's take a look at number nine. That's the funkiest of all of them, I think. All right, so four consecutive odd integers. So that the sum, oh, forget, I'm not even going to read the rest. Four consecutive odd integers. I'm going to let x equal the first odd integer. I was going to tell him to stop, and then I realized he wasn't doing it to aggravate me, so I didn't care. <laughs> He's doing it to aggravate us with the elephant. That's your problem. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first odd integer I'm going to call x. So let's say my first odd integer is 3. What would be my next odd integer? 6, 5. 5. How do I get from a 3 to a 5? Add, Add 2. Add 2. So that's my second odd integer. All right, what about my third? Add four. Add four to the original number. And then finally my fourth, x plus six. plus six. All right, because just like even numbers are separated by two units, odd numbers are also separated by two units. So if I went, three, five, seven, nine, I'm adding two each step of the way, right? So in, in the past, people have gotten a little some puzzled based on this because they look at it and say, well, these look like even numbers. Well, it's not, it's not what these numbers are. It's what the result would be if X was the appropriate type of number, all right? If we solve this and we come up with X equals some even number, then we either screwed something up or it's a bad problem. All right, so that was the quote-unquote easy part. Four consecutive odd integers so that the, this is where the problem starts, the sum of the first three integers. Exceeds the fourth by 18. All right, so, well, we could start off with the sum of the first three integers. X, uh, more room. I'll do it down here actually. X plus X plus two plus X plus four. Now it's saying it exceeds the fourth by 18. I didn't even know that this could move. That is insane. This is like life change. I'm learning about all these new features. It's, it's incredible. Exceeds the fourth by 18. So what is that going to look like? So we want an equal sign. We want the x plus 6. Yeah, so that, uh, that 18 has to come into play here. Plus. All right. Exceeds. It's a weird word. If you're exceeding the speed limit, what are you doing? Over. You're over the speed limit. So if I'm exceeding the speed limit by 20 miles an hour, what's another way I could say that? I'm 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, right? So it's essentially talking about more than. All right, so what this is telling us is that the first group of values, when added together, is more than the third by 18. So we need to correct for that. We can do it that one of two ways. One way would be to reduce the left-hand side by 18, so subtract 18 off of this, or add 18 to the other side to balance it out. All right. So if I'm, um, 20, I guess 25 years older than you, roughly, 26 maybe. If I'm 25 years older than you, 
then to make our ages the same, I could either subtract 25 from mine or add 25 to yours. Okay, that balances it out. So it's just a question of where do I want to put the 18? Where is it more convenient? Do I want to put it on the left or do I want to put it on the right? I like having it on the right because it's a loose constant. There's no variable attached to it. I have a ton of variables on the left-hand side. Odds are I'm going to try to isolate x over here and move all the numbers over there. So having 18 on the right-hand side is a good move. All right. Combine like terms. Left-hand side becomes what? 3x plus 6. Right-hand side? X plus, X plus 24. Next move? Subtract X and simultaneous with that? 6. So we're looking at 2X equals 18 yeah divide out the 2 x equals 9 a little quality control here you just want to make sure the objective was to get an odd integer if I came up with something that wasn't odd I'd be really concerned all right but it is odd so we're good to go so we know x is 9 and then we could get everything else based off of that Now, of course, my last joke wasn't hilarious if you didn't know my name is Ted. Um, what? He said every talk is a Ted talk. I mean, everybody I mean, I'm not really sure why on earth I'd name my website tedcan.com. Oh, maybe you didn't know my last name was Can. <laughs> so let x equal the first odd integer but we'll just say integer now the second one what's the spacing between odd integers how many units of space two. still two So we're doing x plus 2 and x plus 4. All right, which is weird because, I mean, if you snuck a peek at the solution to number 6, we're talking about three consecutive even integers, and it's the same setup. And that's, again, because if I, if I take some arbitrary odd integer, so some random odd integer just out of space, so like 17, how do I get to the next odd integer after 17 add two, two right there's space out by two units uh, all right so this is our setup now we want the sum this is where we actually get to work there's some decreased by the second equals 50. so can you just not incorporate the second one because they'll cancel each other out it all depends on, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. You're right. You have to show it. No, you don't have to show it. But you know what? I'm going to show it, though, just so I can illustrate what you're talking about. But So when they said their sum, they're talking about all of them. So x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 decreased by the second integer, all right? So this is what what we're talking about here. If we take the sum and subtract the second odd integer, the result should be equal to 50, which means that you never had to have the x plus 2 in there to begin with. Right? Because if you distribute, and I'll, I'll actually show the distributing, x plus, I'm going to leave it like this, though I'm not going to clean it up yet. 
minus x minus 2 equals 50. We have these two here and these two here. They cancel out. It's a zero sum. All right, they add to equal zero. So x and negative x cancel. 2 and negative 2 cancel. And you have 2x plus 4 equals 50. Then you could do the subtraction followed by the division. So we have 2x equal to 46. Divide out the 2. And you get 23. All right, so we need our three integers. We have the 23 to start off. That's our first one. Add two, you get 25. Add two more, you get 27. All right. So this is kind of, I mean, not really a trick question, but I can see how people would get tricked on it. The wording is kind of funny. Yeah, it's the audience here or something.